it's always nice to start off the year with organized with the plan of action and the whole nine. So let's get a drum roll going, you know, because this is the part of our predictions episode, right? It's 2021 certainly. predictions. People are always going to be asking us and they're going to be asking us throughout the year, what do we see coming for 2021? So I think it'd be good if we kind of go in order of how we just presented these last stats with new listings, closed sales, demand, interest rates, the whole, the whole nine, right? And we're going to talk yeah, so let's talk about, let's start with new listings, Scott. Do let's you, do what do you see for new listings 2021? Do we see an increase in inventory as a prediction or do you think that uh, inventory is gonna hold steady, maybe even a decrease inventory for new listings coming to the market? Well, what we do know too is is past trends can be an indicator of what we'll see this year. So if we look at for just seasonally adjusted numbers, we know traditionally in real estate, uh, after the holidays are over, people uh, get back to school, get back to work, they start thinking about what they're going to be doing. And a majority of people, if there's got, they've got school age children and are going to be making a move, they're thinking, you know, we kind of like to be wrapped up by the end of the school year. So that's one thing that we see. And I don't really see a change in that portion of it. The other portion is our baby boomers, those that are retiring. And they're, we've seen a huge uptick in online searches for cities, communities all over the country. So we know that the interest is out there for people thinking where they might move, even within California, moving to uh, different areas to get closer to children and grandchildren. I would I would say, Lane, my prediction on that would be for our baby boomer clients, especially since we know uh, this generation is getting closer and closer to retirement and in retirement in many cases, I think our baby boomer clients are gonna be on the move even a little bit more so than we've seen in the past. That's my prediction part of it. Yeah, and that might help inventory for sure. So I, I think I'm right along. I think it's gonna be relatively steady, relatively similar, maybe a slight increase in inventory, which would be great for a lot of our home buyers that are out there looking. So in transitioning, so let's say we do see a few more homes come to market in 2021. Um, you know, how many closed sales are we going to see in 2021? Is that going to go up? Is that going to go down? And, you know, are, are there going to be concerns for homes being able to close in 2021? Or is the market still going to hold really strong? Well, again, if we look at what's been going on this last year, as we said, there is so much heightened, heightened demand. With the gurus that we talk about, the big banks, our mortgage brokers, we're not going to see any huge change in interest rates. That's what they're telling us. And I, we, these are VPs at Bank of America we've been speaking to, our go-to guys at JMJ Mortgage. Several different sources are all pointing to the fact that even with the administration change in the White House, that interest rates are probably not going to take any major changes this year. If we look at that as the driver, the primary driver for the high demand, plus the fact that the uh, millennial generation with their strong uh, dual income situations, those things are going to stay strong. So I think demand is going to stay high. So if we see a little uptick in, in home prices, it's just going to level out that marketplace. And also, I'm going to say, I look back 30 years here in coastal Orange County, it's never, ever really been a buyer's market. And I hate to break the bubble to our buyers, but it's never been heavily weighted to the buyers except for a couple blips uh, around 2008 and 9-11 and maybe a couple of the other recessions that we've seen. But these are literally short couple month blips. So uh, without laboring the point, I'd see a little easing for our buyers in 2021, but I don't see the floodgates opening. I really don't. Yeah, I think I'm on the same lines as you as far as, so going back to, you know, new listings, I, a steady increase, if not the same, same with closed sales. I think because I think the supply and demand correlations, they're both going to increase together. So yes. just many homes that are going to hit the market, we're going to have a little bit more of demand as well um, because interest rates are going to stay low. But I also think the fact of the matter is there's still a lot of home buyers and home sellers that are on the sidelines right now waiting for the, the COVID um, thing to hopefully subside a little bit. Maybe a vaccination coming up here will hopefully ease things. Maybe it sounds like maybe in the summertime of next year. And those might be uh, folks that are, might be feel a little more comfortable uh, either putting their house up for sale or going in and purchasing and taking a look at some homes. So I do think the inventory and closed sales are going to uh, increase a little bit uh, in correlation with each other together. You know, I agree with that. And in closing out that topic, you know what? Uncertainty fosters inactivity. So I think hitting on what Lane said is the more uncertainty that we have out there, the more inactivity that you have. People like to make choices and decisions based on facts and knowns and then act on those facts and knowns. So Lane, you're absolutely right on. And I would say that would be another perhaps third factor in what we're talking about with our predictions for next year. The more certainty that can come into people's minds and, and homes and, and ideologies, I think then the more impetus for action, which would be to make some of those moves that 
they're just thinking about they're doing, whether it's you know, transferring jobs or whatever. So I'm going to add that as a third uh, uptick there. If, as we see more certainty, I think we're going to see more movement and an increase in homes coming on the market. Yeah. So, so far, we're going to see hopefully more new listings in 2021. We're also going to see more closed sales in 2021. So what is that going to do with pricing? Is, is pricing going to stay level? Do you see uh, pricing appreciating in value a little bit? Are we, are we going to be pulling back a little bit? Is there going to be some sort of a correction? What are your predictions for 2021? Wow. You know, this is really a fun episode. I got to say this because, you know, usually we're so much uh, hindsight driven, looking at forensics, fact based, and we're going into uncharted waters here. Again, new administration in the White House, post-COVID environment. And I'm drawing so much from having been a full-time real estate professional for 33 years and weathered so many different markets, ups and downs and so forth. But then I'm, Lane, I've got to go back to, you know, what I felt over the years in our in our marketplace, it, there's always high demand here. It's a wonderful place to live. The climate is fantastic. The job market is strong. Uh, arts, entertainment, leisure are off the charts. You know, we're close to the ocean. We're close to the mountains. There's reasons why people want to live here. I don't see any lessening or diminishing, you know, in demand. And frankly, that's the dilemma that a lot of people have when they're thinking about, you know, moving away. These baby boomers. We. It's really the good life here in Orange County. Um, and, and I see the good life continuing and again, encapsulating, it's going to be a place people want to live. It's going to be a place, unless there's a compelling reason, a lot of people still don't want to move away. I, I would have to agree with you there. And, and as the baby boomers may be moving out of their homes, their bigger homes, they're still need to buy something. And a lot of them do stay in California or in their local areas. They just don't want the larger home, but the bigger, the biggest buying, um, pool, I guess, if you will, for 2021 is projected to be millennials. So millennials are going to be coming to the marketplace. Monster.com did a stat, uh, uh, an analysis, and eight out of the 10 top sectors, job sectors that millennials work in were unaffected by COVID because a lot of them are in tech. So yeah. they still have the stable jobs. They still have the stable income. They're going to take advantage of the low interest rates. They're going to get into the marketplace. So they're going to take up some of the inventory that maybe some of the baby boomer generation might be leaving behind. And I, in that case, for what I see, I think that there is going to be a, 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 a small amount of appreciation uh, for homes in 2021. I don't think it's going to be as much as we saw in 2020. I think it's still going to be there. Uh, we also read a lot of articles and we follow a lot of economists, uh, specifically in the real estate industry. And every single one of them, whether it's 0.4% appreciation to as high as six or seven in some of the articles that we've read, they're all predicting some sort of an appreciation. So I do see um, that everybody seems to be on board and on the same page that we are going to see some level of appreciation for 2021. I think that's right on. I think thanks, Lynn, for circling back around because that was the point of this last topic is, you know, what kind of appreciation can you see? Because our clients love to know, gee, if I hold on, you know, is the sky falling? Am I, you know, will I be losing a lot of money, leaving money on the table if I don't make a move right now? And as real estate consultants, as advisors, we want to be giving you the most up-to-date information we can get from our ex experts, but also the anecdotal, as, as you're hearing from Lane and I saying from our boots on the ground and what we're seeing every day. And kind of on that note, I want to add one more thing. We're, we hear in the media and we see so much, oh, mass exodus from California. Everyone is moving out of state and you know, there's a, you know, the top five destinations, et cetera. But if Lane and I and Philip look into our business in the last quarter of this year, even the consultations we're having, uh, to Lane's point just a moment ago, a lot of our clients are saying, you know what, we really like it here. We would just like to cash out on some of this amazing equity we have and we'll downsize. Maybe it's to a senior over 55 community. Maybe it's to a smaller condo staying within Orange County. Maybe we, re we relocate from Huntington Beach down to South County, maybe, you know, 30 minutes down the road and not out of state. And I think that's what's exciting about what's happening here. And that will drive that uh, those sales and purchases you know, right here in our own backyard. And then the other thing that we're also hearing again anecdotally is as people think about moving out of state, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, it's nirvana. It's it's this fantastic new thing. It doesn't have any of the bad things that I'm seeing happening here, but we've been talking to people that are starting to do some research. And these are people that, for example, like, you know, the availability of restaurants and all the amazing types of food we have here. They've looked at some of these other places and they're, you know, a little generic, a little, um, to chain restaurantish for them. And I'm just throwing in one topic there. So one thing I might mention is our clients and friends think about this is, you know, do your homework. Um, you know, sometimes in relationships too, the grass is always greener, but then we come back and say, gosh, it's not so bad here at home either.
Yeah, and, and we're noticing a lot of our clients maybe that went out of state several years ago, a handful of them are starting to come back and they're maybe looking to um, come back to California, but then it's a little bit tougher because home prices have gone way up since they left and the affordability has maybe gone down for them since they moved out. So again, like like Scott said, grass could be always green on the other side. Make sure you do your homework to, to, to know and feel that this is gonna be the absolute best move for you in doing so. Um, but switching gears, Moving to inventory, Scott, for yes. 2021, are we going to see an increase in inventory at all, do you think? And again, I apologize. I got off on a tangent there. I'm so passionate about what we do in serving our clients. It's easy easy to get off the, the, the narrative there, but I appreciate you guys and your patience. I think we are going to see a little bit of an increase in inventory, Lane. It just stands to reason that we will for all the reasons that we've talked about before. I do see a little bit of a loosening up. Not being the anal analyst like you are, I can't say how much of a percent but I think it's got to start loosening up. It just has to. I don't think anybody can give you a, an increase in a percentage as far as like, I know for a fact that inventory is going to go up by 12% in 2021. Uh, <laughs> don't quote me on that. There's no fact. I, it was just a random number I threw out. But yeah, I, I hopefully, I mean, we need it. I think there's going to be some inventory coming up, whether it's the baby boomer generation looking to make a retiree move. Um, I, do you think that, because uh, we get this question asked quite frequently too, but do you think that there could be more distressed sales coming in the future, whether it's a short sale or foreclosure? or anything like that? Well, I know that there's, you know, some of the pundits out there saying that that is possibly coming on the horizon. I, again, look back at our 33 years here in our own uh, backyard. We've always been hit less with every uh, economic downturn than the rest of the country. And I don't see any difference here, but I also now will switch gears and point to one of the stats that we keep hearing about, Lane. I'd love for you to address this is that there's record amounts of uh, home equity going on right now in the United States and in California and in Orange County. And for a distressed sale, by definition, you've got to have someone be almost upside down or have no equity in their house. And they have to short sale or worse yet, they have to go to foreclosure because basically they've got nothing left in the game. They've got nothing left in the game if they were to sell their house. And we're just not seeing that. Even if someone does have to sell their home because of a hardship or not being able to make the payment or whatever, I don't see that as translating into a distressed sale here in our marketplace because most people can sell their houses on the open market. We just said demand is going to continue to be high and people have equity. They're going to pay their closing costs and real estate fees, have equity and still be able to move to that next chapter of life, even if it may not be an upwards movement, but a lateral or a down move to a more affordable community. There's going to be assets uh, and, and, and positive cash equity at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what, too? Uh we, a lot of programs have been put in place this year to help people stay within their homes, whether it's the for, whether it's forbearance. But the last major real estate related recession that, that that we remember is that one in 2008. But when that first went happened, Scott, they didn't even have loan modifications out until late in the recessions. But then what ended up helping is they had these loan modifications, they had these short sale programs that were put into place to help folks. But those weren't put in place right away. So now that they already have those in place now, now they're forbearance, like there's a forbearance um, program that they put in place for to help people. They're trying to really um, make an effort for people to be able to stay in their homes, uh, not lose their house, not be foreclosed upon. And a lot of these programs are in there to help. So I think that I don't see this crazy, you know, increase in foreclosure or short sales coming in 2021. I think Lane's right on. And I know we've kind of re- you know, reiterated some of the points that we've hit on other uh, shows this year. But again, that's also kind of the purpose of this show. It's 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 a wrap up of of what we have seen, what we've experienced this year, taking those experiences and then projecting them into 21, 2021. Again, moving into a new year, we don't have a crystal ball. But as we wrap up our show today, we like to say, you know, we the Sack and Stone team really do believe the best is yet to come. Uh, there's a lot of change out there. Like we said, change uh, brings anxiety. It brings uncertainty. At the Second Stone team, we want to help take all of that information and help bring in a note of certainty and uh, comfort and excitement to what's next. So as we look forward to next year, I think the consensus is we're bullish. We feel our market's going to continue strong for those clients that we have out there that are thinking about selling. Uh, again, we, we're in sales. We want to sell your house when you're ready. But I think the good news is when you're ready. And the same for our buyers. There's hope. We think the inventory is going to increase just a little bit. Interest rates are going to stay strong. So the market for you is looking good for next year as well and looking a little bit up. So I think 
buying or selling, my prediction is, you know, thumbs up, we're in good shape. Yeah, it seems to be like 2021 is going to be good uh, overall for the real estate uh, sector, and at least in Orange County in particular. So just to recap, as far as 2021 predictions, new listings, we predict that there's going to be a, hopefully a slight increase. Closed sales, because of that slight increase, there's going to be a, a, a correlation with uh, demand. So hopefully there's an increase in closed sales as well. Medium price, we predict that the medium price uh, homes are going to appreciate inventory. Hopefully inventory goes up a little bit. We need it. If you start to see news articles that inventory is going up, that's okay because we need it. So don't panic. Um, interest rates, that's one that we didn't touch upon as far as what interest rates are going to, what we predict interest rates are going to be in 2021. Uh, Freddie Mac just came out with the stat and, and they feel that interest rates are going to remain low. Right now you can probably get something if on a 30 year fix between in the twos, maybe around three. They're thinking it's going to be in the three to low three. So even if there is a slight increase, that's still historically very, very low and appealing for, for a lot of people who are going to be looking to either uh, purchase in 2021 or even refinance their mortgage. But I mean, those are our 2021 predictions. Uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in 2021? What are you feeling? What are you seeing? What are you reading? Let's get that conversation going. Let's get that open dialogue going. What do you think happened in 2020? You know, this is a forum that we want it. We want participation. We want questions. We want to have that engagement and that dialogue. And um, as always, for any of the stats or any of the news articles that we have, we do have a blog. We're going to put the blog post up there, sackandstoneteam.com blog. Make sure you check it out. We always stay current on weekly articles. And we just thank you so much for watching and your participation. Absolutely. We're so grateful. This is, and you can see, you know what, Lane and I love doing these shows together. I'm more of an uh, experiential, experiential I don't know if that's even a word, uh, putting my take on it, things that way. Lane's more analytical based. We think it's a yin and yang that really works well for our clients. Neither of us is right all the time. We just want to be wrong very little of the time. And we hope that you've gained value from this and the approach that we take for this. But again, as he said, I want to reiterate, we're here for you. We want to get the dialogue going and, and keep that dialogue open and communication lines going to make you feel most comfortable. All right. Well, we will be back next week, Christmas week, holiday SNL special. Maybe we'll wear some Santa hats for you. But uh, if you have anything in particular that you want us to address for next week's episode, leave that in the comments as well. Give us, send us a direct message. We're here for you. We want to make sure we're answering all of your questions. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. And we are going to wear special hats next week. Lane didn't even realize I already have them sitting right here next to my desk. So, <laughs>